Hey, I'm Brian with HVACRschool.com and the HVAC School Podcast, and I'm here with Sal. Sal with Products by Pros. How are you guys doing? You look kind of anxious there today. I am so you're, very you're, anxious you're, today you're, because <laughs> I'm not sure what pace this is supposed to happen at. Okay. All right, so today we're going to go through the Solder Weld HVAC Multi-Kit. So this is a Solder Weld Multi-Kit. The one that you received may be slightly different. Um, there's a little different lanyard that's coming on. This is one of the first ones out of the, out of the batch, but this is a brand new kit. And we're going to do a quick unboxing of this and talk about the different pieces to this kit and what they're all for. So the first thing to notice is this is a really nice tube. This tube is waterproof it's got a seal on the top so you can use this for everyday use you can hang it by a lanyard in your truck and it'll bounce around and it's not going to damage the solder or even the flux that's on uh, the 56 percent rod that's important that it's not jostled around too much and this kind of keeps everything nice and tight and dry right. whenever you're dealing with fluxes you really got to make sure you keep them dry because you'll have moisture then and it starts getting brittle and hard right up right and on the 56 percent it's the flux coated rod so you got to care for that but then also there's a little tub of flux in there you just don't want moisture in with your solder or alloy i'm going to get corrected because if it is not below that 800 and what is it 860 if it isn't below that temperature it's not technically a solder even though we often call it a solder it's what we call a brazing alloy so if you're in that higher temperature range a lot of what we're going to show you you're are educating me here on those terms brazing today. alloy yeah okay all right so comes with a little brush on it which is really nice for cleaning off flux afterwards if you're dealing with uh, the aluminum product or the 56 percent you need to clean it off afterwards to get any of that flux off and it's also nice just to do some quick cleaning before you braze handy thing to have but now let's go ahead and open up the kit and we've got a whole bunch of different products in here. We've got a 56% rod, which is used for a lot of things that we'll get into. We've got a alloy saw, which comes attached with its little tub of flux, which is for aluminum. And we'll talk about that some more. We've got the newest product in the line, which is Alcop Braze. And this stuff is like the Swiss Army <laughs> knife of brazing alloys. It's actually a channel flux product. And then we've got our Sil Silsol 5. This is actually the kit that comes with the 5%. We also have another kit that comes with the 15%, with the 15% well. which is my preference. Right. I, I like 15% a lot better. But um, some people want the 5% because of the uh, economy of the thing. Obviously, silver is not cheap. Um, so let's go over each one of these and what the utility of each one of these products is. Actually, to start with, let's just go with the Silsol 5. So the difference between 5 and 15% is 5% only has 5% silver in it. It will still work for most copper to copper applications. It is not as ductile, which means that it's not gonna flow quite as easily and it's not going to hold up to stresses like uh, vast temperature changes, pressure changes, vibration quite as well as a 15% solder will. Now, I know it's not recommended on the, you know, we recommend the five or the 15, but when you get below a five, how does that change with like a two, a zero, or a one? I get some, some guys asking me in the field, you know, can I use a two or can I use zero? Yeah, sure. I mean, so the answer to that is the same changes that you see from 15 to five are more extreme as you go less and less silver. So the silver really helps that solder flow out and it helps it be more ductile. And the ductility means that it can, it can flex a little bit. It right. has a little more ability to flex. And so when you have the lower silver levels, you gotta make sure that that joint is super, super tight. Like it's gotta be really, really tight and it's gotta be in a less critical application. If I'm working on a discharge line, for example, on a compressor, temperature is higher right. and you have a lot more vibration, in those circumstances, I'm only gonna use a 15. I, I wouldn't consider using anything else. But if I've got a really clean environment, it's fitting really tight and you wanna do it on the cheap, well then a lot of guys use lower silver. I, we don't use lower silver for anything. We use 15% across the board because it's cheap insurance. I mean, right. sure, it's a few bucks more, but 15% is just gonna do the job better and it's gonna be easier to work with for the techs in the field as well. Okay. All right, so that is the silver solder. I'll talk quickly about silver solder just real briefly. Most technicians make use the fault of not using enough heat quickly enough. That is the number one error that techs make because they're afraid of burning through the base material. So they come in and they're moving the torch all over the place right. and they're never getting it to that sort of deep cherry red color that we want in copper. And a lot of guys, when they see that, that dark red, they immediately say, oh, you burned it up. That's not the case with copper. With copper, in order to make these products flow the way that we want them to, we want to see that slight color change. Right. We want to see it go from its normal copper color to a little bit. We see just a little bit of redness in it, and that's when we know we can apply. That was my first mistake when I started doing brazing demonstrations, and I wasn't getting it hot enough. I really embarrassed myself trying to do it too quickly. <laughs> right. You get stuck, and everything would fall over. Yeah, you need it. Well, you have globs. I mean, and yeah. that's when you see those really awful jobs with the globs all over the place. That's just because they didn't get in. They got scared. They're moving the torch all over. Mm -hmm. Now, moving the torch primarily should be in and out. It shouldn't be 
all over the place. You move in and out, and then sometimes you got to move it around just a little bit. Right. But it's not like you got to be doing this all over the place. You want to get it hot enough, get the solder in, get it drawn into the joint. Another mistake guys get make is they don't draw that solder into the joint. And then for some guys, they want to see that little pretty fillet weld, or we mm -hmm. call it a cap weld on the outside. That's fine. It's it's good to do, but that isn't primarily where the work is done. Right. The work is mostly done in the joint when you're working with this type of solder. Okay. Solder weld makes a great product. They make both a flat rod and a round rod, five and 15%, covers all the bases, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna suggest what we use here at Kalos is the 15% round. That's the product that we, we like to okay. use. And our installers and technicians, they love it. All right, the next thing we talk about is the 56% rod. 56% rod is a flux coated rod. And this stuff has so much silver in it. It is a pricey rod and it's not because of anything to do with solder weld. It's because it's got 56% silver right. in it. So of course you don't want to use this for everyday in and out operation, but if you're working on dissimilar metals with copper, so you're going copper to steel, you're going copper to brass, brass to steel, steel to steel, brass to brass, anything like that, this is a really nice rod to use. And it's got the flux right on it. One thing that solder weld did that I really love is they only put two rods in this case. And the reason I like that is because we don't use this product very often, at least most of us don't. When you get into refrigeration, you may do a little more of it, but your average AC technician isn't gonna be using this rod that often. And because of that, you don't wanna have a whole bunch right. of product in there that you paid for and then it's just gonna bounce around in the truck. That, in conjunction with the fact that it goes into this tube, is gonna protect it like we talked about. With the flux not getting wet, right? Moisture getting involved. Exactly, and also not bouncing around. The other thing that I like about it is that a big mistake that a lot of guys make when they're handling these things, because a lot of them have these slide caps, is they, you know, they're kind of hard to get off and then they end up dropping the rod and then the flux breaks off. Whereas with this, it's a twist motion. I absolutely love that. Yeah. It's, I, hate, I hate when my rubber toppers get lost on any of the other brands out right. there and they all get ruined. Yeah, so that's a really, really nice feature to these, all of their tubes. I really like that. And, uh, and you know, anytime you're gonna work with anything that's a dissimilar metal, say you burn through the copper plating on a compressor, which happens a lot of, uh, way too much in the field, or you show up on a compressor that has the copper plating burned through, you definitely wanna go to a flux coated 56% rod like this from Solder okay. Weld. So that way you can actually get a good seal on it. You're gonna see that flux flow out. A lot of guys ask how you use it. You use it just like you would a five or a 15% rod. Um, you're going to see the flux flow. Um, I was going to say, again, I've tried it with uh, steel a couple of times, and the cherry red part of that, getting that steel cherry red or where it oh. gets red, is very, very important. Right. With steel has different thermal properties than copper, you right. know, so it can absorb more heat. It's a little different, but what I tend to say to people is you got to heat up both metals. I mean, you definitely do, but you, as long as you concentrate that heat on the steel, get the steel the right temperature, you're going to see that copper get to the right temperature, right. and you want to be more concerned about not burning through that copper. That's Correct. what you want to make sure. The Whatever material has the lower melting point is the one you got to be really careful with to make sure you don't burn through. This flux coated rod is great to have on the truck. A lot of techs don't have it on the truck right now, which is one of the big benefits of this kit is that now you've got a couple of these rods. So if you run into that circumstance, now you've got the rod you can use. Right. You're in a commercial application. It's dirty. You're doing brass to copper. You want to make sure you're going to get it right the first time on a TXV or reversing valve or whatever. This is an absolutely fantastic product to use. Perfect. And it's great that it's in the kit. All right. Now we're going to talk about the two really differentiated products because these, you know, you've probably all seen these before but these are definitely different products. Um, I'm gonna refer you to my alloy saw video on how to use alloy saw to patch aluminum um, to see exactly how it's done. Uh, the first thing when you guys see this aluminum kit, they say, ah, it's got flux. You know, I would prefer- Flux cord rod. Yeah, I want, I, want, I want a rod that I don't have to use flux. Here's the thing. This helps you work with dirtier aluminum, which right. let's be frank, when we're in the field, patching a coil, patching a, a rub out, a U-bend, whatever, it's usually not pretty. And if you got to work on a micro channel condenser, for example, mm -hmm. we have a video of that where we had to go in in the field. It was actually a real circumstance on a refrigeration right. job. We had to patch a micro channel. It was a mess. I mean, the thing was rusty, corroded, all that kind of stuff. Having this flux really helps you work on that dirty aluminum and it's going to get in there a lot better. The other thing is, is that this rod is in that 600 degree range which is a much safer range for working than getting up near a thousand, which is what a lot of the other products right. require. Is that right? Yeah, you're much closer to the melting temperature of that aluminum. And a lot of guys will say, hey, I've used it, it works great. I don't know what the problem is. It really depends on the thickness of the aluminum. Right. So like, you're not gonna take your typical, most of your flux cord rods out there and work easily on an aluminum can. It's gonna be tough to do. Whereas with this, I can do it no problem. When you're working on a coil, a lot of these coils have rifled tubing and they're really soft. Like mm -hmm. if you take an awl and try to punch through it, I mean, it'll just go right through. This is where this product comes in really, really handy. I always told you I, I like the flux cord rods more than anything. And the only reason I never liked 
the external flux version of the alloy saw with the straight aluminum rod is it kept gumping up on the hole. Mm -hmm. And I watched your video a couple times after you did it, and what I found was the one thing I wasn't doing was making sure that the hole cleared up after the flux was put on there. Right. Because that's how you knew to put it on. That's how it knew that the, the rod was able to disperse over that area right. a lot better. And it flowed so much better. I didn't have that gumping problem anymore. Uh, so I do advise everybody to just go check out that video. Here's the thing. It's easy to do once you know how to do yeah. it. It's it, initially, if you're trying to use the same technique that you would use on a typical flux cord rod or definitely on your 15% silver solder, it is not, not the, the same, same technique. It is not the same technique. But the great thing with this, and this is what I love about it, because I've tested its strength. I mean, I've taken this stuff, uh, used it on some aluminum plating, and then hit it with a scratch all with a punch, with other things. I hit it with this guy right here. So this, this, is a, this is a big boy, and I hit a big old patch of this stuff with it, and it did not even, wow. it did not even, I mean, it put just a little tiny dent in it. Um, this stuff is a really, really hard and strong patch. Whereas other solders often are more used to pull into a joint, this is a great product for patching a rub out, which is more what we run into. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm wanting to patch a coil, I'm not wanting to cut out a whole section of coil and put in a new piece of tubing. That'd be so invasive, I would destroy the thing. Right. I'm wanting to just get in there, fix the leak, get out. And this is a great way of doing that. So it really truly I is. Agree. I mean, it really truly is my favorite aluminum product I've ever worked with. That was with. my favorite too, Chris. <laughs> and, and I'll also tell you another story. I did um, a test where I took some aluminum plates and I tried some competitive products out there that a lot of people like um, that flow real nice and look real pretty. Mm -hmm. And I tried to uh, solder together two plates of aluminum using that product okay. and then tried to pull it apart. That other product, just in the process of cooling it, cracked all apart. Really? Yeah, it just because it's it's really not it, it's more designed to draw into the joint. And that was a flux cord rod you were using. Flux cord rod, different brand. I'm not going to name anything, right, right. but I, I legitimate test that I did, and it just it just cracked all the bits just in the process of cooling it. Whereas this stuff, I mean, it really really held. Right. Um, there's also another product that they make called called Alloy Braze. It has a flux core. Right. It's a similar product, a little higher temperature that works great for thicker aluminum. I still am not going to recommend that product over this over this when it comes to day in and day out you know, patching of rub outs and, and leaks and coils. I think the is the indicator when to run that rod over. Too. Right, right, exactly. As far as the technique goes, look, check out the video that I already did on that. The HVEC School channel. Finally, the coolest product that I've messed with in ever in <laughs> soldering and brazing is this Alcop braze. And I want you to get a good close up view of this. So this has flux right on the inside of the channel. So you can actually see the flux. There's a little channel cut in this rod. The rod is very flexible, and there's a flux put into this rod. It is a non-corrosive flux, so you don't have to clean it off. I'd still suggest cleaning it off in most cases. It just makes it look nice, but, but you don't have to. It's not corrosive. And all you do in order to use this product is you place it with the flux side down on the heated material, just like you would in most other materials. You start to heat it, and you kind of use that to test. That flux is going to run out. You're going to see it run out, and now you're ready to apply the rod. It's so simple and so beautiful to use. Um, so question ever, but uh, did, I'm not sure if you even said this, but um, the flux should be facing towards the tubing. Flux down, yeah, yeah. It I makes, mean, I know it's common sense, but I didn't. And it'll didn't it'll work. That. Otherwise, but what's going to tend to happen is, is that now the metal is going to start to try to melt on you before the flux, and you want the flux to coat whatever you're working right. on. You know, that's what you want that to happen first. Now, the application is this works on aluminum, it works on copper, and it works on copper to aluminum, which is the one of the, the main applications of it. The other thing with this rod that's great is that if you're working on copper that's very near aluminum, you can't use a typical 15% rod or a 56% rod, because by the time you get that copper hot enough, to right. melt the rod, you're going to melt the aluminum, Correct. right? So if you're working on copper that's very close to aluminum, a couple inches away from aluminum, and it's like you, you can't even get in to keep it cool, that's where this is going to be an excellent product. Wow. There's a lot of applications for it. Some guys are going to find that they like it better than using the alloy saw, and I'm going to tell you, be careful with that. This product is not the same product as alloy saw. It flows really nicely. It looks really nice, but it's not going to have, in my experience, quite the strength that right. you're going to see with alloy saw. Um, so whereas with alloy saw, I would feel comfortable with it in almost every application where you're going to patch aluminum. Um, with this, use it when you need to use it, when there's copper and aluminum together or other dissimilar metals um, that are nearby that you have the potential of damaging when you're heating the copper. That's a, that's a nice, uh, really nice solder to use. And once you use this, you're going to be like blown away because it's so easy to use. Techs in the field can grab this, use it for the first time and be like, wow, this is easy, you know. 
Okay, let's say I was out in the field and I decided to use some of the alloy saw and I, I put some of the flux on there. It just doesn't work out like I thought it would. I didn't even seal up the hole, but I still have some gumped up flux around that hole. Do I have to clean that off before I go and try new use another rod? Will it not stick so, because the flux is on there? So what I would suggest doing, and because not all fluxes are, are equal, the flux that's in this Alcop raise is not the same flux that's used with alloy saw. Okay. So if you're going to transition between any type of metals, you want to clean it up really well before you go to the next okay. kind. I mean, and what we suggest using, you got the little brush here, which is great. You can also use one of the brushes that go on the drill. We got a little cup brush we mm -hmm. use or a wheel brush. You can either use brass brushes or stainless steel. Get it nice and cleaned up and then that makes it really easy. It's also a good idea, any, any of these products that you're using, it's a good idea to have a little cup of water by you. And so that way you can kind of clean it up when you're done. You want to let it cool naturally, though. You don't want to go in with a wet rag right. and cool it because that does stress it. Um, these are still going to work in most cases, but you don't want to do that. It's going to put little stress fractures in it. It's going to be less likely to hold up. With this, if you're in the grass, it's going to be perfect. Uh, if you're sitting on concrete, it's got the little nub here, yeah. so that, that probably won't sit as well. But if, yeah, most cases, or I shouldn't say most, but a lot of cases working in the grass, that's a great little cup that you can use for that. So that's it. This is the multi-kit from... Solder weld comes with either the 5% or the 15% versions. The rest of them are all the same. They tried to kind of match the quantities to how often you use them. You can reorder the particular tubes to go in it um, as you need them. So if anybody wants to get these into their supply house that they buy from today, just reach out to me at sal at productbypros.com or you can go on our website, www.productsbypros.com and there's a form to fill out on there. It'll go straight to me on my email and I'll work with that particular distributor to get you guys set up. Thank you. Hey, thank you all. I think Sal did great. He's a little nervous, but I think it worked out all right. All right, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.